гневная тревога. Алексей Навальный был одним из самых важных оппозиционных фигур в России и, наверное, самым крупным критиком Владимира Путина. Он вышел с такой принципом, что он был обстрелен с пользованием, с обстрелением, и он реально показал Путин государство для того, что это. The protests of 2011 were really the beginning of Navalny's rise and something that uh, he kind of capitalized on in the future. Vladimir Putin said that he'd be returning to the presidency for his third term. This kind of protest movement that emerged out of this brought a lot of pretty unknown figures. Young Alexei Navalny was focused mostly on issues of corruption and transparency that he'd been charting on his live journal blog for, for many years at that point. And it catapulted him into somebody who was seen as the sort of leader of the opposition protest. Реальный, мы все равно будем вести эту избирательную кампанию со мной или без меня. Being an opposition figure in Russia at this point uh, had become an extremely dangerous profession, and there was always a sense that Navalny had something of a target on his back. A lot of what he did was investigating and uncovering corruption, you know, in millions and even billions of dollars. I mean, his point wasn't that, that the Kremlin had the wrong views or, or was against progress. His point though, was that the Kremlin was corrupt. These are people who are trying to steal my country. One of the biggest controversies about Alexei Navalny's political past was uh, that in the 2000s in particular, he'd been very active uh, in nationalist politics and then kind of used that as his first sort of political uh, vehicle. But his views had evolved away when he focused on corruption, etc. He's probably the person that Putin fears most uh, because I think his message combined the interests of people who were maybe in the lower classes, plus liberals, plus the intelligentsia and other groups. Всем привет, судя по всему, у нас обыск. Ветер в дверь ломится, камеры заклеены, какие-то чувачки прибежали. Сейчас нам будут пилить дверь. So this is the person who, in you know, in the space of a decade has pretty much faced every political repression that's possible. And it always seems like he might be put away at any moment. In 2020, he was targeted with uh, a poisoning on a flight. He started losing consciousness, sweating. Video later came out. This person could be heard screaming in pain from the back of the plane. Paramedics uh, who met him on the runway after an emergency landing in Omsk are said to basically have saved him within minutes of, of him dying. In January of 2021, he took off on his last flight from Berlin into Russia, where he's going to be met by hundreds of media, by supporters, and also ultimately by Russian police. That was the last time that he was a free man. His political movement was more important to him than his personal health. Navalny was an interesting figure because for a person who had such strong and sort of principled uh, political views and somebody who was under such intense pressure, he kind of became an opposition figure for the internet age, somebody who every time he got on a flight liked to watch Rick and Morty, and a person who had very sharp, uh, acerbic sense of humor. <laughs> there are definitely people who are going to be scared away from politics. Uh, because of what happened to Alexei Navalny. And I think, you know, that was very much uh, the government's idea of putting him in jail and of subjecting him to the hardest treatment that he met there. For many, it will become a sort of inspirational story. For others, it's going to be a cautionary tale. But uh, it's probably the most important life in opposition politics we've seen here in the last 30 years. Mm -hmm. 